returns over 90 yards and of course you see that the 99 yarder that went for a touchdown uh, they are going to pooch kickoff and try to keep the uh, Buffaloes pinned back somewhere inside the 30 which may not sound all that great but when you look at the fact that Kelly can take it back all the way that's what McAvick has decided to do so we'll see what Phil Dawson comes up with here on the opening kickoff Takes it deep behind that wind at his back and nails it out of the end zone with that long leg. So that's one way to keep it out of Kelly's hands. Buffalo's ball, John Hessler, 15 of 19 last week. Herschel Troutman is running back from Naples, Florida. Also, Barnes is very big. Adam Reed coming off his best performance at center. We're up in the Boulder area, and Phil Savoy, one of the speedsters on the outside against this Longhorn defense. Hessler comes up with run, running back and three wideouts to open the game. Option look immediately. Hessler keeps it. Pitches late to Troutman. Well defended. Five yards against this defense of Texas. And this is the group that has been under fire down in the Austin area. Aaron Humphrey, injury and all, will play. He's their best rush man. They had to move him from linebacking spot to defensive end. He's number 49. He is a good one. But another switch in the middle. Kyle Richardson draws the start. Number 59. And the defensive backfield expects to be very busy today against the Rick Neuheisel passing game. Second down and six is your call. And Troutman battles for a yard and no more. We're going to see all three of the Buffalo running backs today. Troutman gets the start, but I was talking to Kennedy Pola, the running back coach for Colorado, and he says if, if he sees exactly what he just saw there, where Troutman comes up to the line of scrimmage and kind of tippy toes, then he's going to get him out. He's going to put Barnes in the game. Barnes played extremely well last week against Kansas, 129 yards rushing. In the game now on this third down. Hessler obviously making the change at the line. The horns back out. Barnes straight ahead, short. Stopped by the middle of the horns defense that time. Aaron Humphrey was the first to hit Barnes that time, forcing three and out. Now John McAvick couldn't ask for a better start for his defense. And perhaps Rick Neuheisel couldn't ask for a worse start. Comes out, not throwing the ball at all. Came out with the three wide receivers and then went to the option. Rotating punters, so Nick Peach draws the first assignment. And Hodges Mitchell back deep. He waves everybody away, and this one will take a Colorado roll to the all the way to the 21 yard line. So now it'll be James Brown who will lead the Horns offense. The 200 pound senior with the big time running back from San Diego the junior Ricky Williams number 11 behind this offensive line led by Ryan Feebiger the center and he's a good one. So our Chili's Grill and Bar. Lineup includes tight end Steve Bradley. When McAvick has been under fire before, he usually gets the tight end involved, so we would expect to see he and Derek Lewis as receivers here today. First down for Brown. Lineup and I, which normally has been a running formation for the Horns, and this time they're going to throw out of it. Brown will take off. Receiver covered. Well, to the 24 yard line picks up a couple of yards and Terrell Cade the defensive end number 48 makes the defensive play. James Brown if he can run the ball then uh, he will be much more effective. John McAvick says he is not it doesn't have any reins on him at all as far as when he's back in the pocket. If he sees something that he wants to take off and run let him go. Second and six. Here is Williams' first carry through, explodes, one to beat. First down and hanging on, Ryan Sutter, the safety, and he saves a touchdown by hanging on. Ricky would have gone for the home run. Well, Ryan Sutter is the leading 
tackler for Colorado and that's unusual for safeties and it's a good thing he's a great tackler because he is the last guy and normally you'd see Ricky Williams break through that type of tackle but that gives you an idea of how strong number 36 is touchdown saving tackle. So Clown quickly rolls to the left sprints out fires incomplete it'll be second down and 10 there is a penalty flag thrown on the play. Defensively Ryan Olson playing well in the middle coach Kristoff and the Buffaloes. Hannibal Navies Dan Fouts favorite name this week Hannibal Navy <laughs> defensive backs now Dan mentioned the two safeties everything is funneled towards Ryan Black and Ryan Sutter and of course they will make all kinds of tackles for the Buffaloes as the game unfolds. Well their defensive coordinator second down A.J. Kristoff says he, he wants his defense to play a lot like the the old cowboy defense the doomsday defense where the great safeties Charlie Waters and Cliff Harris and in having these two Ryan's black and Sutter that's by design that they, they are the leading tacklers they'll play eight yards off the ball and they are responsible for stopping the runs kind of like having extra linebackers in there coach blitz second and ten split backs Texas likes to throw out a split backs and they're crossing up the Colorado defense fumble but they mark it down. The umpire said the back was down, and it was the fullback who came through, Ricky Brown. There's a little trap play here. Good block there by the tight end, Steve Bradley, number 89, and a good pickup after the penalty. Puts the Longhorns back into a good position here at second and one. No fumble there. His knee were down, was down before the ball came loose. Third and two. And Brown's going to keep it on a quarterback draw and made the first down for the Horns near midfield. Now, Mao. McAvick talked about the fact that it can't be too one dimensional against Colorado if they expect to beat the, the Buffaloes. Can't rely on Ricky Williams to carry the entire load. Ricky Brown had a good run there a couple plays back, and uh, it looks like James Brown's feeling pretty comfortable on that bad left ankle of his. Yeah, it looks like he wants to run around. It looks like a fresh colt out there all of a sudden. Last week, Coach McAvoy said that ankle felt better than it has at any time since he re injured it on opening day against Rutgers, and you can see him taking off again here. He crosses the 45 and then takes a lick. There's the penalty flag. That was definitely out of bounds. Unnecessary roughness on Ryan Black, the senior safety from Phoenix, Arizona. So tack on the penalty on the end of that round, at the end of that run by Brown. And this is a different James Brown today. This is three times now that he's taken off. And here he is just about to step out. He is out with his right foot. And then Ryan Black comes in helmet high. Watch number six. A good call by the officials. That's an 11 yard gain. He had 15 yards to it, and now Texas is down to the 25 yard line. So, their opening drive of the game after forcing Colorado three and out, and the Horns are all the way down to the Buffalo 25 yard line. Brown, three runs for 18 yards already in this game. Clayton is into the backfield with Williams. Brown back to pass, fires left side, and it is complete to White. Let's see, it was well defended over there on that side. So they rule it incomplete. It looked like he had it for a moment. Damon Wheeler is the corner. Ricky Williams is asked to uh, protect his quarterback. Does a great job there on Southward. But watch this, and Brown right here, he, he hesitates just an instant, and that allows the defensive back to close and knock the ball loose. Nice jo job there by Damon Wheeler. But if Brown doesn't hesitate there, that's a completion. Damon's an improving corner. As Colorado Buffalo fans No second down and 10. And here's a delay with Williams. And he's to the 22-yard line. Picked up about three yards on that carry. Colorado's defense must account for number 11 on every snap. Now Williams signing a 
professional baseball contract with the Philadelphia Phillies. The Phillies, of course, pay his college education down here. So in effect, he counts as a walk-on for the long Some walk-on, ladies and gentlemen. It was interesting to see him pass protect with that block, doing some of the little things that Dan Fouch showed you. Third down and seven. leg like Phil Dawson you would think that coach McEvick would go ahead for the field goal to try and get on the board here in the early going and Dawson trots out a lot of these fans though remember the awful day that Dawson had last week against Missouri very uncharacteristic for him to, to miss as he did but he did have that bad leg and McEvick says that leg is fine in fact he kicked over 30 field goals in practice on Tuesday 34 yarder Mark Schultes the punter will put it down. Home turf. Much better. Cures a lot of things. The Horns strike first here in Austin. They lead Colorado by a field goal. You gotta have fire. Slapping, lapping, fancy flames, flicking chicken from every side until marinated bird and garlic and lime has turned from good into sublime. Oh, what has Chili's thus created? Why, it's margarita grilled chicken consummated. Served horizontally, grill marks up on a tostada with a lot of what your mouth waters for. That rib stick and margarita grilled chicken. Cause Chili's grills like no place else. Only by going alone in silence can one get into the heart of the wilderness. All other travel is mere dust and hotels and baggage and chatter. Considering the cost of today's exotic multi-metallic engine parts, shouldn't you use an antifreeze coolant with a patented new formula designed to protect your entire engine? Xerox Antifreeze, extreme protection for today's engines. Right now, get some of Goodyear's best selected tires like Otwood Treads, Eagles, and Wranglers, and get 50 or $75 good towards officially licensed NFL merchandise at participating Goodyear retailers. Call 1-800-GOODYEAR. Great Goodyear Treads, incredible... This is not your father's FBI. C-16, Saturdays on ABC. 8.57 left here in the opening quarter in Austin, Texas. A little overcast, and of course with that wind blowing out of the north. And you can see an optimistic note for the Longhorns here. Yeah, until you look a little bit deeper into the stats and you see they've only scored six points, nine points now in the first quarter this season, and outscored 60 to nine. Here is Ben Kelly. Oklahoma State forced a rally in that game. Missouri opening up a pretty substantial lead in the third quarter, so the Cowboys hoping to stay unbeaten. They would play Texas A&M. Down at College Station next Saturday. Dawson pounded one, this time along the ground. Crosses him up. High bounce, dangerous. Kelly from the 10, 15 and 20. Looks for Priest, and he is down at the 35. I've got to second guess. Phil Dawson gets him down. Dan, i got to second guess that. The way Dawson pounded that first one out of the end zone, why would you even consider putting it in Kelly's hand? The only thing is, is maybe to change up every uh, once in a while. But you know what? This field is so good that that ball bounced almost like it's an astroturf field. Big hop to Kelly at the end there. I'm not sure Makovic expected the ball to, to uh, get all the way down to him. But you're right. I mean, there's a lot of wind here, and uh, they kicked it out of the end zone the first time. I knew you'd eventually agree. First down at 10, <laughs> Marlon Barnes. Barnes stuffed by the horn defense. Kyle Richardson. Who has started middle linebacker number 59 comes up and makes a play. 37 was the score. Missouri ahead of Oklahoma State until the Cowboy rally. So they well could stay unbeaten. And what a year they're having under Coach Simmons. Yeah, but they haven't gone on the road yet. 
played one road game. Now you're buying into that propaganda down yeah, here. I huh? am. I am a firm believer in uh, <laughs> home field advantage. They've taken full advantage of their home. Second down and 10. Oklahoma State has beaten both these teams, and the uh, flag comes flying. There was still five seconds left on the 25-second uh, clock. Big 12 officiating crew, of course. Ball start. Offense. Dead ball foul. Five yards. Repeat second down. John Laurie, our referee. Let's go down to Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, John Makovic says that one of the major problems for his team the last couple of weeks has been simply mental mistakes. He says, we're playing the same sets, the same sort of plays, but this team was not executing, didn't show the Christmas. In the initial going so far, they have shown that Christmas. Now, it's early, but if they want to win, they'll have to maintain it. Right now, it is the Horns' defense standing up. Second down and 15. Hessler trying to get this Buffalo attack untracked. Fires middle, that'll do it. Savoy breaks free, crosses midfield, and there's their biggest play in the game so far. There's their best wide receiver. He's a senior, number 80, Phil Savoy. First pass of the day for Hessler. Great protection as Savoy has to take a lot of time to find this opening in the Longhorn secondary. But this is what he gives uh, the Buffaloes. The running after the catch. Look at this protection, though. Look at Hesser can look all over the field before he finds number 80. Fifth year senior with a 23 yard gain for John. Brings the team up in Texas territory. And here is Barnes. Barnes runs hard to the 41 yard line. And it appears as though it's going to be a change at that running back position up in Colorado. Marlon Barnes coming off a big day. He's a junior from Memphis, Tennessee. 5'11", 210 pounds, and he pounded away and looked pretty tough on that run. And you talk to the Texas defensive coordinator, Bob, Bobby Jack Wright, and he says that Barnes has better vision than Troutman, and he is more concerned with Barnes than Troutman. Second down and four. Option, Hessler looks to keep it. First down, John look and run, penalty flag comes late. Hessler to the 23-yard line, and a penalty flag thrown back by the 40-yard line as Hessler was bringing it around the left side. So, Neuheisel's team hit with a mistake. Hessler's had a lot of success running the option in his career at Colorado. He was a high school option quarterback. But this penalty just kills Bub the Buffaloes. They were way down inside Texas territory here. And that's the third penalty so far for Rick Neuheisel's outfit. So John Hessler on the season. You know, he's a fifth-year senior. And this is how they have done against the, the option so far this year. Second down and, and 14. As a sophomore, Hessler, of course, stepped in for the injured Corey Detmer and did a spectacular job. And now it is the Texas defense doing a spectacular job here today against the Buffaloes. Cedric Woodard, number 50, was the first to hit Barnes that time. This is a great call by the Bobby J Jack Wright of the Longhorns. Watch number 17 come on the corner blitz here. This is a great call. After the penalty, Colorado's backed up. Now you come with the blitz. And number 17 was in on the tackle, Joe Walker, true freshman. Now Neuheisel stacks three wide outs to the top. Neuheisel looks and catches a quick slant on that side. Darren Cheverini, the wide receiver, brings it for 20 yards on third and 18 and a Colorado first down. Now well, here he is right here, and you see that there is only uh, two defensive backs on this side of the field for Texas. Three wide receivers, very easy for Hessler to just raise up and throw the ball to the inside guy, Cheverini, and that's a huge conversion for Colorado. Yeah, John Hessler bails him out on a third and 18. As Charrington steps in as the running back. He's the third tailback today. Number 10, Dwayne Charrington. Hessler throws for the corner incomplete, and he overthrew Cheverini that time. 
Quinton Wallace was on the coverage, but they really never had a chance to hook up on that play. Hessler made it floatable, Dan, but he just simply threw it a little bit too far. It was great coverage by uh, Quinton Wallace. Uh, he realized that his team was blitzing, so as a cornerback, one of the ways the offense tries to beat you is by throwing the fade. Wallace backed off nicely that time and just gave Chimarini no chance at all. Marcus Stiggers is out to Hessler's right. He has preferred so far throwing up there to the right. And this time they run for another first down. Fumble and Texas says they've got it, but it's going to be marked down. Oh, I don't know about this one. This one's going to be close. Charrington, the ball carrier, barging for the first down. Ball comes loose as he goes down, and it was close. Well, that's why we have instant replay, Brent. Everybody at home can watch this one. 13-yard gain for Chever Charrington. That's real close. Yeah, the I knees. think that's a fumble, yep. Yeah. Punched out before the ball, uh, before the knees hit the ground. That crowd having seen the replay, they certainly agree with your analysis on first down. They run the toss play. Barnes is back in, and Barnes is out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Take one more look at it. Is it. Were his knees down, or was the ball coming out? Uh, I think it was coming out. But very, very close. Regardless, Texas will have to play on here. It's a break. And Makovic certainly disagreeing with that call. Second down and six. You see the slot toward the top of your screen. They option other side wide open for Hessler. What a call this is. Touchdown, Colorado. They bring the option to the short side after showing a slot formation to the right. We talked about all the problems that Texas has defending the option. This is Hessler's longest run of the year. Ties it to 18 yards and a 16-yard touchdown last week on the option against Kansas. Jeremy Aldridge. Jeremy Aldridge. Colorado leads it seven to three here in the first quarter as John Hessler trying to put together games shows a strong option look here. The Buffaloes go 66 yards in nine plays. We're coming right back. Frankie, let me ask you a question. Yeah. These frogs. Do they really taste like chicken? I'm not answering that. I'm just curious. Stop it. Come on, it's barbecue season. Would you marinate them? Would you slow cook them? We could toss them over a salad. I believe in miracles. Where you from? You sex a thing. Sex a thing, you. Chevy Blazer with the driver control system. A little security in an insecure world. Enjoy it while you can, hot shots. Your days are numbered. Louie. I know a lot of predators. Lower your voice. I'm very friendly with the snakes. And I know several very large ferrets. ABC Sports presentation of college football. Brought to you by Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Big Mouth Burgers. America Online, so easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Dean Witter, there are many ways to measure success. Dean Witter measures success, one investor at a time. 
and Chevrolet trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Jason Leslie, after John Hessler, leads the Buffaloes into the end zone. Hodges Mitchell and Jeffrey Clayton are back deep for the horns. 442 to go. The barefoot hangs up a good one. This will be Mitchell from the five. Down at the 20, and we send you to New York and check in on John Saunders. John. Brent, it's a Burger King update. Arizona against Washington State. Ryan Leaf having a terrific year, leading the nation in passing efficiency. But Kevin Hunter steps in front of this one and then takes off 52 yards down the sideline, gets it down to about the 10. Three plays later, Ortiz Jenkins would punch it across from a yard out. And right now, Washington State trails Arizona by seven. Oklahoma State and Missouri. Oklahoma State had 30 unanswered points in this game. Looks like it's headed to overtime. Yeah, John, what a great game that is. And Stillwater here, 7-3, Colorado leads. Texas with the ball again, and James Brown on first down. Fires, it is complete to the 42-yard line. Courtney Epps, the senior wideout. When you have a great running back like Ricky Williams, play action pass is going to be very effective. If the receivers can find a spot in the secondary to get open, watch as the, uh, this is the touchdown play here for Hessler. Great block by the tight end. But uh, Brent, there's nobody for Hessler. All he has to do is get by one guy for the touchdown. Texas is going to have to shore up that defense, stop that option. Ricky Williams and Hodges Mitchell on the field together for Brown after the 21-yard gain. There is the Texas option, and Williams didn't get away with it because of the defensive play by Brandon Southward, the junior linebacker, number 66. Southward is well aware of the fact that uh, Ricky Williams needs just a couple of yards coming into the game to go over 1,000. He now needs four join some uh, very illustrious company at UT. Second and well. Pamela and some other guy. Yeah, pretty <laughs> good fellas. Switch back to the eye. Tailback is Ricky Williams. Gets the ball on a slant to the 46-yard line. That's Navy's number eight. The junior linebacker making the stop for the Buffaloes. Well, here comes number 19 on the field, Jeremy Jones, and he's a wide receiver that Coach Makovic and the Horns offensive staff hopes to get involved in this game today. He can be a deep threat, can be inconsistent, and let's see if they're going to use him right away. They put him down in a slot to the right. Usually that's where you put your most dangerous fellows. And Brown is back, goes far incomplete, and he overthrew it. That's not hard to do. Jeremy Jones is only five feet nine. And if you take a look at his uh, feet, he's got a brace on his ankle there. Pretty obvious that uh, that right ankle has been giving him problems, but he's so small that uh, he's going to take a lot of big hits and not be able to recover. Shelters to punt. Here in the first quarter, Colorado seven, Texas three. Damon Wheeler. The cornerback, sure hand, standing back on the Buffalo's 11-yard line. High and short. We are going to make a catch on a move. Dangerous right there and down in a hurry at the 25-yard line. Normally, when they come up on that, they signal for the fair catch. It's 7-3, 2.30 to go in the first quarter. And we've got a flag. Crystal foul after the play, Colorado. Mistake. That'll hurt you. I'll take you out of decent field position in a hurry, won't it? So we'll come back with Colorado leading Texas by four points. I'm K. 
Kinney, a friend of Dick's. Miller Lite has asked me to find four cheerleaders to send to the Super Bowl. Today, you're going to meet the Caesar Brothers from Hawaii, USA. They have their own way of looking at cheerleading. Hey, Miller, 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 Miller,
picks up eight yards on that carry as the first quarter comes to an end. And if this running game of New Heisel's continues, it would be a long afternoon for the Texas defense. 7 3, Colorado, end of one. Meet Duke, cop. He loves his job. And the third door in his Chevy S10. It's one of a kind, just like Duke. Chevy S10, like a rock. The aluminum in your car radiator is as thin as this sheet, and it's the only thing between you and a breakdown. But Presto Antifreeze bonds with aluminum, forming a zone of protection against corrosion and temperature extremes. Protect your car in the Presto Zone. Presenting the Valvoline Big Play Rebate and Sweepstakes. Save $4 on a case of Valvoline Motor Oil, and you could win one of six Mark Martin signature Ford Thunderbirds. Here comes Mark now. He's up and right on the money. Valvoline, the number one choice of top mechanics. A lot of people my age set off on cruises around the world. Now, I set off on a second career. Hi, guys. Of course, my Dean Witter Broker's impeccable investment advice prepared me for any sort of retirement I chose. And I chose to start over with a business of my own. Wait a minute. Are you sure you're old enough to be here? <laughs> That's my idea of a fascinating adventure. At Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. At BASF, we don't make the boat, we make it faster. We don't make the safety seat, we make it more comfortable. We don't make the studio, we make it quieter. We don't make the golf clubs, we make them more powerful. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy, we make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. In that first quarter, Marlon Barnes of Colorado outrushed Ricky Williams of Texas, 34 yards to 25 yards. Second down and one for the Buffaloes from the 47-yard line as we start the second stanza. And here is Barnes again, this time for just about a yard with Chris Smith hanging on. And he's been very active since he came into the game. He's a 6'5", 245-pound sophomore defensive end, number 87. That's a ton of misses. That's incredible. You'd think that they were trying to tackle Earl Campbell or somebody. Pretty good uh, indication of uh, some of the problems that this man has faced. A lot of youngsters on that defense. There are seven true freshmen in the uh, three deep alone on defense for Texas. Colorado shows a slot to the wide side of the field. Esler fires. Complete number six, Darren Chevarini. Pretty good football game coming up Monday night on ABC 9 Eastern Time. Little rematch of the Super Bowl, although not quite the same Green Bay Packers right now against the New England Patriots. Drew Bledsoe, his brother Adam, backup quarterback across the way for Colorado. May see him a little bit later in this game, may not. Second down and one. Missouri scored in overtime, so it's 44 all going to the second OT. Charrington gets the call from running back. A big hole for Charrington to the 35-yard line. And that is a first down on a five-yard run for Charrington, number 10. And this tackle by James Clark seems to have uh, injured Charrington. But the way that uh, Barnes is running, I don't think that this is going to slow down the uh, Colorado offense at all. See him kneeling down on the far side. And here's the new number one. Gets the call. Bounces to the right. Hole to the 26-yard line. Let us check in with John Saunders. John, another busy Saturday, partner. Busy in the end zone as well for Arizona against Washington State. Third and 18, Ortiz Jenkins tosses this one up 37 yards to Dennis Northcutt. 
And just like that, Arizona has built a 14-0 lead. Brent. Hi, John. Thank you. Here it is, 7-3, Colorado leading Texas, second down and one. Washington State thinking roses and maybe be handed some dandelions by that Arizona defense today. Esler tries to create shovel incomplete. And it'll be third down and one. Hessler trying to make like Doug Flutie or his version of the same. Flutie used to complete that. Take a look at the stats in the uh, first quarter. It's been all Buffaloes. And when you look at the 124 yards, multiply that times four, and that's almost a 500 yard day for Colorado. And then the time of possession obviously is going to be all in this man's favor. It is third and one. Colorado lines up in the power eye. And they bring Barnes kind of tiptoed into that hole, and Texas jumped on him. They did not give him that seam. Joe Walker, probably the first to hit him, number 17 that time. They'll bring in the sticks and measure. He did tiptoe, Brent, because he didn't follow his fullback, Darren Fisk, right here. Fisk is going off right guard. He's got a good block, but Barnes, for some reason, cut it all the way back over the left guard spot. And in short yardage, it's imperative that you stay as close to that fullback as possible. And boy, are they lucky that they got uh, just that one inch there to get that first down. That would make New Heisel go, go off on the sidelines. Just shy of the 25. Colorado leading and driving again. They came into Austin favored by five points here today. Makovic knows that Duhaiser loves to pass in this situation coming in. Stiggers up for the top of your screen. Trotman back as the running back. And Hessler going to set the screen. Troutman. The screen receiver to the 16 yard line and a good gain on first down. Anthony Hicks making the defensive play and the Buffaloes threatening again. The crowd ever so quiet here in Austin. Screens have been huge for Colorado this year, especially uh, Dwayne Charrington. But this is Troutman and the big mobile offensive line. You've got Thomas out there, Johanning Meyer is out there, and they like to run that quicker of the two screens to the right side. Because those guys can get out and make contact and open space. 13th play in this drive coming up. Dominating the game. Here's Barnes. Not going to get it. Good play there by number 49, Aaron Humphrey, coming across for the horns with some of his buddies. Remember, Humphreys is playing on a real bad ankle. Watch as he plays off the block of the tight end, Tennyson McCarty here. Also, Aaron Wade is out there. That's as good a defensive play as the Longhorns have had all day. Here's your third and three. Sherrington back in the game. Colorado to throw. Drop. It'll be fourth and three, and let's see if Neuheisel elects to go for the field goal, and that unit does trot onto the field. This was a poor throw by Hessler. It looked like he hurt it a little bit. He knew he had some pressure coming from the weak side and just threw it too low for Cheverini. Jeremy Aldrich is long this year is 34, and this is a 35-yard attempt. So this would be his season's best. Andy Mitchell, one of the punters. You put it down on the 25. On its way. And there's your 10-point lead. His best of the year, Aldrich, a 35-yarder. And it is 10-3. We'll be right back. Sex 
Industry experts told us that the passenger side was the best place to add a third door. We got still more advice insisting that the driver's side was the only logical choice. But as you can see, we let it all go right in one ear and out the other. Introducing the new Dodge Ram Quad Cab. The rules have changed. To get the most out of your digital satellite system, you need DirecTV. And for expert advice and guaranteed low prices on your new system, you need Circuit City. We're your DSS experts, and we'll show you how to see more sports, movies, and pay-per-view than on any other system. Right now, get $100 off professional installation or get a self-install kit free with any DSS purchase. Circuit City. You can't get a lower price. We guarantee it. Saw the looks, felt the tension. It had to happen. Pause in your court. The practice. ABC Tonight. 10 3, Colorado with the lead here in uh, Austin, Texas with Jack Arood. Dan Fouts, I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to have you along with us. And uh, this fellow with the sprained ankle, we didn't even know if he'd play today, but Humphrey may have saved the touchdown drive. You don't know what would have happened after that, but he forced him into the field goal. And it was this play on the option as he fights to the outside. He, I don't think he knew if he was going to play today until he came out before the game in pregame warm-ups and tested that bad ankle. Colorado will kick it off. Jason Leslie. Barefoot and all will bring it on down. Mitchell and Clayton deep for the horns. Horns need something to get the crowd back in. It's like they've come to a tea and cupcake event here. And Mitchell. 10, 20. Twist to the 25 yard line where the Horns will put it in play. So Missouri went first in the second overtime. They scored. And Oklahoma State has driven to the five yard line attempting to stay unbeaten. So drama unfolding here in the Big 12 is James Brown. And if Brown doesn't get something going now we're going to hear some emotion from this crowd and it's not going to be pleasant. They're going to be yelling for Makovic's head here real soon. Oh that started way before today. First down and ten. Marches to the 29 yard line, pick up about three yards. Navies, number eight, the linebacker. There's the backup quarterback, Richard Walton, out of Bay City, Texas. Big fella, big hombre, 6'5, 225. And McVick told us yesterday he is not uh, afraid to put him in the ballgame at any time, especially uh, if Brown struggles. And at one in four, one completion out of four attempts, I'd say that Brown is struggling. Second down. And Brown fires. And it was picked off. Intercepted on the near side. Intercepted at the 41 yard line by Damon Wheeler. What a great play by number two. The protection is pretty good after the play fake to Ricky Williams. But there's a little bit of hesitation here by James Brown. And it's a great play by Wheeler as he cuts inside Courtney Epps for the interception. It's Wheeler's uh, first of the year and fourth interception thrown by James Brown. And that Texas defense back on the field in a hurry. And a short field it is. 42 yards. That's all Colorado needs here. Leading already 10-3. There's that familiar two tight end formation. Hessler rolls over to the right, fires complete, and this time he picked up a tight end to crossing number 86. Roddy Hefner out of Del Mar, California. 
They've had 20 turnovers now going into the game 19 and uh, you can see that their opponents have been very good about turning those turnovers into points. We'll see what Colorado does with this opportunity. Troutman and the Buffalo running back. On a delay, left side explodes to the 14. So he's running with a sense of urgency, hoping to regain some playing time with the way Barnes is playing. A 12-yard run by Troutman. There's a sense of urgency, but it's, uh, it's easy for Colorado right now. Watch the offensive line just come off man for man. Johanning Meyer with a good block on the linebacker there, but by the time he makes that block, Troutman is already seven yards into the secondary. 11 first downs for the Colorado offense already. Savoy off to the left. Stiggers to the right. And the Buffs will throw again on first down. They want that fade. Savoy goes jump ball incomplete. Being battled over there in the corner. And that was Joe Walker. You got to like Savoy's chances against uh, Walker, a freshman. Six foot three going against six foot even. That's great coverage by the true freshman, Joe Walker. And not a great route by Savoy. Never really forced Walker to turn to the inside. This ball hangs a little bit. Incomplete pass. Sherrington, the running back. On the draw. It opens for him to the four-yard line. First and goal. And this just in. Missouri upsets and hands Oklahoma State its first defeat of the season in overtime. And with the new rule, Oklahoma State going for the two-point conversion, missed it, and they lose to Missouri 51 to 50. And congratulations to Coach Larry Smith, that entire coaching staff up at Columbia, Missouri. What an improvement that team has shown this year. Huge win for Mizzou. Charrington swings, tries to get the corner cut. Touchdown, Buffaloes. Colorado puts six more on the board. The four-yard run by Dwayne Charrington, the sophomore from Santa Ana, California. And the days grow longer or shorter, depending on your point of view, for Coach John McEvick. You can almost see the relief on the side of the Buffaloes and on the face of Rick Neuheisel, and you contrast it with this face, John Makovic. Enormous pressure here in Austin. Jeremy Aldridge pounds in the extra point. So after a sluggish start, John Hessler, Rick Neuheisel's quarterback, a week ago threw for 188 yards and two touchdowns against Kansas. Here today he has run for one and handed off for a second one already. And the Buffaloes build a 17-3 lead on the horns. Time out. Dodge Ram gives you the most powerful overall line of pickup engines on the planet including two even more powerful V8s, the most powerful diesel, and the only V10. You'll be glad to know we also worked on this, making it easy to answer the oft-asked question, wow, what have you got under there? Dodge Ram. The rules have changed. I'm grateful that Michael Garcia is in our lives. State Farm Mike Garcia speaking. We had a house fire, a house burned. That was a tough day. He didn't treat us as a policyholder. He treated us as a neighbor, as a friend. I gave him a check right away. We went from there to putting the pieces back together. He's not a hero in the sense of a, a sports hero or a movie star. He's a quiet hero. He looks out for everyone in the neighborhood. It's gone from being a slogan to really being my way of life. Before planning your next getaway, call Thrifty Car Rental at 1-800-4-CARS. We're right in your neighborhood with great rates on great cars. For a limited time, rent a compact car for only $29.95 a day. But at that price, they're going fast. 
So call Thrifty now at 1-800-4-CARS or your professional travel agent. It's quick, it's easy, and best of all, it's Thrifty. What a finish between Missouri and Oklahoma State. It's into the second overtime. Oklahoma State going for the two-point conversion and the win. Tony Lindsay is hauled down shy of the goal line on the quarterback draw. And Larry Smith's squad walks off with a victory. Again, they did not have to go for the two at that point. They did, and they lose. Brent. Yeah, John, exactly. I may have misled everybody. It's the next time in the rotation that everybody has to go for the two this year. So they elected to go one series earlier. Came up a little bit short. They flame out. What do you think about that strategy, Dan? I don't like it. Uh, you're at home, and... Uh, you're going to have to go for the two pointer in the next overtime anyway. Why not just keep playing? You're the better team going in. And did you see the formation? It was one of those wild uh, type of swinging gate formations there. And uh, Oklahoma State will uh, probably get a little bit of criticism for it. They showed that swinging gate earlier in the game, so it certainly did not catch Missouri completely unawares the next time you have to look at it. Good point. And uh, running a quarterback draw. Uh, that's a tough play to run at any time, but when you only have three offensive linemen in front of the quarterback, uh, I might have chose uh, perhaps another type of play to, to run at that, that situation. Well, back here in Austin, Dan, are you surprised that the Longhorns against Hessler in Colorado have come up so flat in this game? Well, you know, they uh, lose to Missouri last week, and, and they felt that they should have won that game. So I guess the question is, how good is Missouri? This is a Texas team which surrendered 66 points to UCLA earlier this season. And the fans here have not forgotten, nor have they forgiven. Down in the end zone, coming out of the 20. Let's listen in on Rick Neuheisel. Let's keep it right there. If he makes a play and they got a pro flag, okay? You're keeping the ball there. All right, you got it? Excellent job, fellas. Excellent job. Nice job on the play action. How was the Z dig? Okay. Yeah, Brody was wide ass open. Way to run. All right. It's all good. Huh? Of confidence in him. <laughs> He's got a, a huge lead here. 14 point lead. Look at uh, the time of possession. It is all Buffalo. Dominated. James Brown now needing to come up with some plays. Offset eye from Ricky Williams. And Ricky to the 23-yard line. And Feely Mamao, the senior from Honolulu, makes the stop. He's been a good one there, Boulder. I asked uh, A.J. Kristoff, defensive coordinator of uh, the Buffaloes, who was their best defensive lineman. He said it's Ryan Olson. <laughs> Feely uh, squats 700 pounds. I said, is that good? <laughs> He says he is strong. Second and six, and now Williams, daylight. Short of the first down by about a yard. Now the 29-yard line. Now this is good uh, offensive play selection by the Longhorns. You got to go with your best player. Ricky Williams is clearly their best player. Back-to-back 200-yard -back games coming into today. this going. How high. Fullback lead. Williams cuts off it and breaks free and gone. Put up six. Ricky Williams will take it to the house. When they most needed it, Ricky Williams, as Dan Fouts pointed out, is their best player. And he put Texas right back in the ball game. 71 yards. Three straight carries for Ricky Williams. And this one goes to the house. 71 yards right between the two safeties. That's just beautiful to watch once he gets this far. Dawson. And Texas battles back. Their star, number 11, back-to-back, 200-yard -back, rushing game. And here, Ricky Williams. 
Williams is the reason why Texas is still in this baby. They trail it 17 to 10. We'll be right back. Even though Dodge Ram is the bright red gold standard of pickup trucks, we're always improving things. We've made our available Magnum V8s even more powerful. We've improved the already world-class interior. In all, we've made 130 improvements to the Ram lineup since introduction, including this one, our new flow-through ventilation system. New Ram Quad Cab. The rules have changed. Hi, I'm John Beekner, president of the University of Colorado. At CU, learning takes place inside the mind and outside the classroom, mentoring neighborhood school children, taking the first steps toward the global scientific community, meeting the needs of an evolving workplace. Whether you're scaling a mountain by degrees or pursuing your own degree, meet your challenge at the University of Colorado, a total learning environment. Attending the University of Texas at Austin has been an experience that has changed my life. UT means academic excellence, outstanding teachers, state-of-the-art facilities, and great people. And all this is located in beautiful Austin. Being a member of the UT family makes you part of something special forever. Promotional consideration provided by National Car Rental, the official car rental company of ABC Sports. Let's go! ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Jeep, makers of the Jeep Grand Cherokee, Cherokee and Wrangler, the document company Xerox, National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Ricky Williams and the Horns back in it. 71 yards. Best dreadlocks, best dreadlocks, Dan, in college football right there. Did I mention that he's from San Diego? Sure. Patrick Henry High School. Ben Kelly and Marlon Barnes back deep for Dawson. Let's see what the Horns elect to do into the win this time. There is the pooch kickoff to the wedge man. Fair catch signal for, and the catch is made at the 25-yard line. So that big fella put his hands up there, and Tom Ashworth brought it down. Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, Ricky Williams loves to study football. He'll study all the films that his coaches give him. He'll study videos from his hero, Earl Campbell. But the thing that he does that I've never heard of before, Brent, he tapes all the highlight shows. Sports Center, our show. You know what he does? He says, I like to watch the running backs and study them, especially in the highlights. He'll get to study himself this weekend. Yeah, exactly. We'll be seeing that run over and over and over. And you'll probably see some of Marlon Barnes, number nine who's on the field for the Buffaloes right now. First down the call, and the Horns were ready that time. They had that play well diagnosed. Gray Mosier, the defensive lineman, the junior, number 95, leading the way for the Horns. And did you notice how tight the safeties of the Longhorns were playing that time? Both McGowan and Babino were real close to the line of scrimmage. They're trying to force the action, get Barnes before he can get rolling. What a momentum change in that 71-yard run. And Ricky Williams was brought the crowd back into the ballgame. And remember, it was third and two. Here it is second down and 12. Hessler fires Savoy. First down, Colorado. This is pass complete to number 80, Bill Savoy. Savoy is number 80, bottom of the screen. Working against Wallace, just a simple turn in, but Wallace giving him way too much room, respecting that speed of Phil Savoy. Desmond Dennis checks in as one of the tight ends. Play fake and in trouble. Complete. Forced to throw that one away because of the pressure. Brandon Nava, the Mesquite, 
bring in the heat that time. Next Saturday, here is the lineup. We've got Oklahoma, Nebraska coming your way out of the Big 12. So we will be in Lincoln, North Carolina State, Florida State out of the ACC, USC, Washington for the Pac-10, and a Big 10 matchup still to be announced. So that's our coverage next week. Second down and 10. Here is the delay, and Barnes tries to duplicate what Ricky Williams did. Still battles and goes to the 30-yard line. Forced the defensive back to his knees. Strong safety, Greg Brown, tried to make the play. And Marlon said, out of my way, partner. I have never seen a play like that where you straight arm the guy that is right in front of you. Usually it's to the side when you're running to the sidelines or going out of bounds. Watch Barnes with his left hand just push Greg Brown over backwards and keep going. What a great run by Barnes. 34 yards, so he has rushed 15 times for 76 yards. And he's accepted Ricky Williams' challenge. Cherry in at running back. His call, spinner, not from the second man. And that, Aaron Humphrey, will not let you away. The surest tackler we've seen on the horn so far. Dusty Renfro is the one who came across the line of scrimmage first. And Renstro coming into the game was the number one tackler. Here is Humphreys, and here is Renfro. Watch Renfro on the run blitz. He's got to make that tackle right there. Good thing that uh, Humphrey is on the outside as Charrington tried to bounce it out wide. Three unassisted tackles for Humphrey. Two for losses. Second down and 13. Toller for the first time. He's a sophomore wide receiver, number 17, short of the first down. Ball is at the 25-yard line. Buffaloes will need five yards on this play. This is one of the big problems that Bobby Jack Wright has with his defense. They're just not getting any pass rush out of their down four linemen. The only time we've seen Hessler be knocked on his back was just recently when Brandon Nava, a linebacker, came on the blitz. Tennyson McCarty. And it tied in for Hessler and the Buffaloes. Quarterback wants to change up as they stack eight in the box. Hessler wants to put it out under pressure. They bring the heat, and Texas gets it done. So a gamble by the Horns, and Hessler cannot make the man-on-man -man coverage pay. An 11-yard loss, Renfro and Humphrey. And this takes him out of field goal range. Number 46 is Dusty Renfro. And this is his fourth sack of the season. He's in there with his buddy, Aaron Humphrey. Well, Hessler saw it coming. He backed out and made the call, but he still could not find enough time to put the ball in the hands of the wideouts. A 53-yard attempt here coming up for the Buffaloes. Jason, not close. And I suppose my only question about that is, you give Texas a little bit better field position with them climbing back in this game. Dan, what do you think about that? Well, I think that uh, Neuheisel likes the fact that Leslie has a big leg. He's let him try three times from over 50 yards this year. That one had plenty of distance, but it was way off to the left. But you're right, Brent. This shortens the field a great deal for a guy that just went 71 yards. Now the quarterback from Beaumont, Texas, James Brown, the senior. The big play man puts it in his stomach. And Ricky Williams for about a yard, and it'll be second down and nine. Colorado ready for him that time. Colorado defensively wants to bounce Ricky Williams to the outside. But you saw on the touchdown run, it was a third and two, and they ran right up the middle. And that's not the strength of this Colorado defense as far as the linebackers are concerned. They like the speed of their linebackers, force everything to the outside, and let them run them down from behind. This is usually a tight end play for McAvoy. Bradley and Derek Lewis, 82, are in the game. And Brown sprints back. Goes deep, Derek Lewis. No, deflected away. Beautifully. Oh, Sutter was over there on the far side. 
went right with Derek Lewis and made the second pick of the day for the Buffaloes, and both of them have been beautiful. Well, my name, Hannibal Navies, made the play, number eight. And watch as we freeze it right here. This is great coverage by Navies on Lewis, number 82. Watch as he gets his right hand up there, knocks the ball over to the safety. Two interceptions now in a row for James Brown, but this is just a great play by Hannibal Navies. Thank you very much. So it was interception. Home run, Ricky Williams. Interception. Buffalo's come back down up 10, and Marlon Barnes is back as the Buffalo's running back sprints down to the left, got daylight. And he runs hard to the 48-yard line, picked up eight yards on first down. There is James Brown now troubled a bit by that but uh, James don't be too too upset about that little deflection and that safety coming over rotating he was the right man in the right place wasn't he? we wouldn't hang the quarterback over that one or would we do? no I think that's just really good coverage and good teamwork by the two defensive backs for Colorado that's first option late pitch dangerous but got the first down it's Barnes out of bounds at the 45 yard line well we got 140 to go until halftime so let's check in with John Saunders and see what's ahead at halftime coming up on Valvoline halftime 97 four undefeated teams in action today well a big one in East Lansing Michigan Michigan State battle for state bragging rights but also Michigan still in the national title picture all right it's all coming up on Valvoline halftime 97 and here, 140 to go in the first half. Colorado 17, Texas 10. First down for the Buffaloes at the Texas 46 yard line. Hessler keeps it. Hit it beautifully. Goes deep down to Savoy. Got it. Touchdown. The home run header for the Buffaloes. And it's a 45 yard strike to Phil Savoy, the 6'3 senior. You remember when Neuheisel was on the sidelines talking to his players? He was talking to Savoy at the beginning of that, talking about going up and making the catch. Play action pass here, fake to Barnes. Savoy is behind the secondary. This is a great catch here, though. Watch the concentration as he uses all bit, all of that six foot three to get the touchdown catch. Joe Walker. <laughs> On the coverage, pretty good coverage, but just a great catch by Savoy. Here's Aldridge. As the extra point makes it 24 to 10. There's our situation, and John Hessler runs for a touchdown and throws for a second. After the interception, the Buffaloes go 62 yards in only three plays. And so James Brown now needs to come up with some plays of his own. A little bit different relationship on the sideline between quarterback and coach. Not quite like it was in Ann Arbor when there were sparks flying. Here's on the ABC lineup tonight coming your way at prime time. C-16, total security, and the practice. So between peaks at the World Series, you might want to check one of those shows out. They'll start at 8. Uh, How's your battleship doing this week? I don't know. Are they still sinking at C-16, partner? <laughs> well, Jimmy Leland and the Florida Marlins. What a story they have been.
the number one choice of America's top mechanics, people who know use Valvoline. and Kirsten Dunst discovered the truth behind the hauntings of this Hollywood hotel. Tower of Terror, ABC Sunday, 7, 6 Central. Best hold on to someone tight, because look what happens to Soul Man Tuesday night. Too much blush. And the horrors have just begun. Just check out over the top for some ghoulish fun. Look what I've become. It's Tim and Annie to boot. No wonder critics are calling it a hoot. So join us for all the fun-filled fright. <laughs> ABC Halloween Tuesday night. Welcome back. Your second half is straight ahead, but first it's time to introduce the Burger King Scholar Athlete of the Week Award. During the 97th season, Burger King Corporation and its National Franchise Association will donate $1 million to the general scholarship funds of recipient colleges and universities. This week's featured scholar athlete is LSU senior punter Chad Kessler. There's a lot of guys that just, uh, their minds uh, stray off course and, and uh, they are emphasizing the right things in college, and, and I think uh, you're here to learn. That's what college is all about. That's what it was based on. Congratulations to Chad Kessler. Now, earlier this week, 17-year-old Purdy Tran of Arcadia, California, was chosen as the 80th Rose Queen and will be featured at the 109th Tournament of Roses Parade. You can watch the parade on January 1st on ABC as well as the 84th Rose Bowl game later that day. Congratulations again. ABC's College Football is online live. Get all the action from today's game and follow the Heisman Trophy race. All in America online. Keyword ABC Sports. And ABC Sports presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC station. Document Company, Xerox. The competition can't explain how a car that broke all the molds still has enough power to keep blowing away the stereotypes. Ford Taurus SE Sport. Now with a 200 horsepower Duratec V6. Have you driven a Ford lately? Hockey is back. And there's only one place to get all the action. Avalanche Alert welcome. with Mark Crawford. Every Sunday, Tony Zarella teams up with a coach to bring you the stats, the highlights, and the inside scoop from behind the bench. Plus, find out what the players are like on and off the ice. That's what I have to do right now to, to be back on the ice. So, uh, this is definitely frustrating. Don't be left out in the cold. The Avalanche Alert with Mark Crawford. Sundays at 5.30 on 7 News. Big deal. I gave my quarterback a present. It seemed like a good idea until the offensive line found out. They reminded me how they protect the guy that throws me the ball and mentioned how they get hungry too. Well, if they let me out, maybe I'd get them each a new big and tasty sandwich from McDonald's. A quarter pound hamburger with lettuce, tomato, and onion for just 99 cents. Or I'd even get them an extra value meal for just $2.99. Do you have the keys to everything in the stadium? Hey. Do you ever lie awake at night, staring at the stars, wondering about garage doors and openers? Who invented them? Who's built and installed more than anyone? And who would you call if you needed one? <laughs> Get a life. The genuine, be original, overhead door. What else do you need to know? It is 180 degrees from expected. 
features a leather-trimmed interior, available heated front seats, and an Infiniti 10-speaker audio system. The new Chrysler Town & Country LXI, built on the belief that great cars appeal to a more passionate side. And now, it's available with $1,000 cash back or a very special low lease rate. Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. The Avalanche Alert with Mark Crawford, Sundays at 5.30 on 7 News. First half, Colorado leading Texas 24-17 with Dan Fouts and Jack Arruda. I'm Brett Musburger. John Hessler on the option play for the Buffaloes, a 66-yard drive. In nine plays, it was 7-3 Colorado. But later in the first half, Ricky Williams exploded, 71 yards. James Brown was picked off twice by the Buffaloes. They made him pay. Here is Hessler going to his talented wide receiver, Phil Savoy, 45 yards, 24-10. Then time running out of the first half, and Williams walks in for his second score from one yard out. So, Dan, uh, what do you think now about our second half here in Austin between these two? I think the key is is that the Texas defense is going to try and pin back this Colorado uh, offense. Hopefully they've made some adjustments and will be able to stop the run. But I love seeing big play makers make the big plays. And Ricky Williams really bailed out the uh, Longhorns with that long touchdown run. And then the uh, defense of the Buffaloes with all their pass interference calls free on that last drive. leading kick return man. He is frothing. Remember, he's the young man who was called for interference, and we'll clear that controversy up after at least the kickoff. Kick off. Was it spotted in the correct place by the officials? They do not want Kelly handling this ball. Short man, Marlon Barnes, the running back, and down in a heap from the 27. Jack Aru, let's clarify exactly what happened there. We've got uh, Dan is, of course, ready to show the play again, but you go ahead and tell us what the officials decided. Well, Brent, I talked to John Laurie at halftime. Now, he's the referee for today's contest. And he said originally, when the pass interference took place, the, the officials felt, as we watched the tape, that the infraction took place in the end zone. But then they gathered and they spotted the ball at the two-yard line, which would have been half the distance to the goal. But as you see, it actually took place in the playing field. The field of play requires instead that it become a spot foul. Therefore, they spotted the ball in the one, and the rest is history. Yeah, exactly. So remember this. If it's less than 15 yards when the interference is committed, then it is a spot foul. That's why the ball was put down. Here, regardless, I think Ricky would have scored from two or three or maybe even 10 or 12. As Hessler fires complete to Stiggers to uh, start the second half. Marcus Stiggers, a sophomore from Dallas, Texas. Big treat for him to come back down here to Texas and perform in front of family and friends today. You know, Brett, the short kickoff kept the ball out of Kelly's hands. But more importantly, watch this hit by LeVar Jenkins on Marlon Barnes. And Barnes limped off the field. He may not be able to play in the second half, and that would be a huge loss for Colorado. Yeah, so Dwayne Sherrington, number 10, is in at running back. He scored a touchdown in the first half. Here is Sherrington. He stood up short of the first down. And let's take a look at our Dean Witter first half stats from this ball game. You can see that, of course, in that rushing category, Colorado with a pretty good first half, Dan. Yeah, and the, the turnovers really helped as well. But look at the penalties. That's incredible that Texas has no penalties in the first half. Third down and two. Dan, it's possible that they were hit once. I want to double check that just to make sure. Charrington. I believe he stopped short the first down. That was Quentin Wallace coming up from the corner. Number nine, the senior. Let's see where this ball is spotted. You know what? Roger Riley's all over. You know what? It was called and declined, so it is no penalty. Yeah, I had complete faith in him, Brent. I don't know why you don't after all these years. <laughs> well, these numbers, guys, you know they're not perfect, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
the sticks are out to measure for this on third down and uh, that much uh, the horns indicate that and you know this is exactly the way the game started for Texas on defense they held Colorado to three plays and a punt but Neuheisel looks like he's going to go for it on fourth down here comes big time call in this part of the field from the 36 yard line Rick needs a yard Hessler having run the option why doesn't he just keep it just find a crease step over there keep going first down Colorado I guess sometimes the shortest distance between two places is that straight line and uh, Neuheisel elects to go with the quarterback sneak behind big Adam Reed easy first down for Hessler and a the, pretty gutty call for New Heisel to start the second half, I think. Yes, it is. Uh, we want to go back also and compare the two quarterbacks. Brown continues to struggle with the throwing game. Hessler much more efficient like he was last week. And, of course, Brown has served up the two picks. So let's see if Hessler... <laughs> it almost looks like he's What saying, is this? Huh? Huh? <laughs> that two tight end is uh, sometimes read as a hook and horn, isn't it? And here is Cherrington, nothing doing, throwing for a yard, thrown for a yard, lost that time. And Woodard and Mosher, numbers 50 and 95, making the defensive play for the Horns. Take a look at the uh, first half possessions for Colorado. And uh, you see the fact that they ended with a touchdown. That's a great way to end your first half. Two wideouts. The one running back is Troutman back in. Kessler fires deep left side incomplete. Ball was intended for Stickers. Walker with the coverage. Very similar type of offensive plays for Colorado that they started the game with. A couple of running plays and then throwing one deep. That looked like the ball could have been caught, but the ball was sailing way to the outside. It might have been out of bounds if he caught it anyway. Third and 11. New Heights were forced to peer into the late afternoon sun here in Austin, Texas. Kessler, the screen dropped. A great rush that time by the Horns. Yeah, Colorado looks like an entirely different team this, to start the second half at least. Look very flat. I wonder how much that injury to Marlon Barnes has affected uh, the Colorado offense. Well, it's Andy Mitchell's turn. And there's another Mitchell waiting for it. three-yard line. We'll take a break. Texas with a good defensive stand to start the second half, and they trail us 24-17. So what are we going to do tomorrow? Saturday! The new redesigned Ford Ranger. The only compact pickup built Ford tough. Long ago, an inventor came up with the assembly line, allowing a few people to make a lot of something. It was the model for efficiency. At Chili's, we pride ourselves for our inefficiency because we make each of the Big Mouth burgers by hand, grilled one at a time by a person. And when you taste for yourself how good they are, you'll appreciate all the time we've wasted. Chili's Fresh Grilled Big Mouth Burgers, monuments of inefficiency. 
market for building materials, you got to come to the Home Depot. We sell two by fours, we sell plywood, we sell doors, windows, roofing materials. You're going to see insulation as well. You're going to see rebar. We've got everything having to do with cement. Our lumber department is inside and not going to get all warped wood. I could go on and on and on and on about what we've got down there. I've got customers that have built their homes out of Home Depot. It's incredible. You can build your house cheaper than you ever thought you could. You're going to see ladders. <laughs> I'm not finished yet. You've waited long enough. I am Peter. Blue is back. With a vengeance. Hey, All new Blue, ABC Tuesday. Well, Jack Arruda, are we going to see Marlon Barnes for Colorado later this half? Brent, you will not. Marlon Barnes has suffered a problem with his medial collateral ligament on his right knee. They've iced it down, and he is out for the rest of the game. Rushed for 93 yards for the Buffaloes today with 17 carries. Big loss. Here's Brown on first down. Play fake. Slips away from the... Throws an interception. His third of the game. And Colorado scores as Ryan Sutter picks off his second pass of the day. And the walk-on safety from Fort Collins, Colorado, walks into the end zone. Here he is, right here, number 36, and this is a real poor decision by James Brown. The coverage is, is there. Watch as he reads the tight end, Bradley. Bradley doesn't come back to the ball. Sutter steps in front. 34 yards later, he's in the end zone, and that may be the shot that just absolutely deflates this crowd and kills Texas's chances today. All reach for the extra point. Perfect. 31 to 17. Down by two touchdowns again after an impressive defensive stand on first down. Brown, who slipped the first defender, simply throws it into Sutter's hands. He's trying to make something happen with this throw. He's got pressure right here. He avoids that nicely, but now it's an off-balance throw late over the middle. Nothing on it. Sutter with the easy pick. And then look at this picket line. As Sutter goes in untouched for the touchdown. Quiet, very quiet in Austin. 21 points off turnovers. A look ahead at uh, tomorrow's programming. The PGA Tour Championship preview. They'll play the Tour Championship in Houston this year. That's at 3 Eastern, 2 Central time. And then the MLS Cup 97, Colorado against D.C. United. Starts at 3.30 Eastern time, both tomorrow here on ABC. Mitchell and Clayton are back deep for the horns. And Jason Leslie, the kickoff man for the Buffs. Mitchell takes a knee and it'll come out on the 20. And here comes James Brown again. So here's a young man, came out of Beaumont, Texas. Could have also probably played basketball at the collegiate level. He was outstanding. He has six 300-yard games. He has 14 200-yard games. He has 121 multiple TD passing games for Texas, and none of the above this season. It's the kind of year it has been for number five, James Brown. And their offense has been number 11. Ricky cuts to the 24-yard line. Back in that second quarter, Ricky Williams had 111 of Texas's 146 total yards. That was in the second quarter, his big explosion. And they need some more big plays here from Ricky to climb back in this. It's second and six. See Ricky in the huddle. You see the reflection of his teammates. That's a great shot there. Yeah, we can't hear what they're saying. Whistle before the snap. Let's see if the clock expired. Hit ball. Where to snap? 
False start. Offense. Five yard cutout. Repeat second out. Well, it is time for our Home Depot coaches fact. John Makovic, of course, he won the final two Southwest Conference titles and then the inaugural Big 12 title. That was that great upset over Nebraska and St. Louis. Defeated Texas a and back to back for the first time in a long time, but it doesn't matter a lick. He's under enormous fire down here. Second down at 11. And Brown to run this time and not even put it up. Makes a slick move, 25, catches the corner. Cuts back and down at the 36-yard line, first down. Nice 17-yard run by Brown. Very determined run by Brown. Maybe that's what he should have did on the last play instead of uh, trying to force the ball into his tight end. This guy is going to keep competing, though, and uh, he realizes that this may be the strength of his game. And when he's healthy, there are a few quarterbacks in the country that are as good as James Brown running the ball. Damian Craig at Auburn, another one of the running quarterbacks. Williams twists to the 36-yard line, hit by Navies. I'm quite frankly uh, pretty surprised that Brown is still in the ball game after talking to Makovic yesterday. He said he wanted to see Richard Walton play a little bit. And in this situation now, down by a couple of touchdowns uh, and Brown struggling, I'm surprised that number 10 isn't in the ballgame. Second and 11. Deep drop screen. makes the play with his great ability to catch the ball and run you would think that Texas would be an outstanding screen team and I think that's a, a good idea is to try to get him the ball in, in as many different ways as you can because he is that threat he brought to this team back in the first quarter with that great 71 or in the second quarter rather with that great 71 yard run you have to do it again First reception of the day. Third and five. Brown, middle, picked off. There's number four. Threw it right to the defender, Cade. And Cade with an alley. Thanks to the 15. And I think perhaps we will see Richard Walton this time. Brett, I've been there and I've done that. I know exactly what James Brown is feeling. You go back to throw, and it looks like you don't have anybody on your own team in the secondary. That time he threw it right to Terrell Cade, number 48 of Colorado. And then to add insult to the play, look who has to make the tackle at the end of the run. It's going to be number five, James Brown. And watch Cade lower his shoulder and try to punish the quarterback. Well, on the other side, John Hessler, who started to get his quarterbacking act together last week against Kansas. He's played a good game here today against Texas. Charrington is his running back, and Hessler's going to throw. He'll set the screen to Charrington. Charrington to the eight and down. It was a different Hessler when you watch the tape of last Saturday night's game against Kansas. I know you went to practice up in uh, Boulder. What did you see with him, Dan? And what did you hear about the young man? Well, the thing that Rick told me is he said that when Hessler was having all that success as a backup quarterback, he came into the game and automatically a coach will uh, eliminate a lot of plays, scale things back for him. Well, beginning this season, he gave him the whole offense. And what he's found is that he needed to scale some of the offense back. And that's what they did last week against Kansas and what they've done this week against Texas. Option. Pitch. Not much doing that time. Texas was ready. Babineau out of Fort, out of Port Arthur, Texas. 
And what frustrated Rick, this is the Michigan game when he, he kind of went off on him on the sidelines. And Rick told me that he, what he was telling him at that time was, listen, you don't have to be Superman. You don't have to make every play. Just play within the confines of the offense. Well, maybe the offense was too big for Hessler. And I think Newhouse will figure that out. He uh, eliminated some plays. And Hessler's been performing very well since then. Friendlier confines. For Hessler, protection, fade, corner out, jump ball, and this time incomplete. Savoy over there being defended by Wallace. You know, Savoy has got to uh, give a little bit better effort here at the end of this. If he stops right here and leaps, then Wallace will run all over him, and it won't allow Wallace to get his hands on the ball. That was good makeup uh, reaction by Wallace there to force that incompletion. Andy Mitchell's the holder for Jeremy Aldridge. 26 yarder. He's already kicked a 35 yarder, which was his longest. And now he punches in the second one. And so Brown and the Longhorns pay for the turnover. Walton with his helmet on. And we may be seeing number 10 at quarterback for Texas. Okay, Bongo, wave. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Come on, he's never going to get it. Finally learned to wave bye-bye. The new redesigned Ford Ranger, the only compact pickup built Ford Tough. For years, you've heard the debate. Duracell. Energizer. Which battery lasts longer? Duracell. Energizer. Duracell. Energizer. Duracell. Energizer. Recent tests prove that Duracell outlasts Energizer. Better make it the alkaline battery proven to last longer. Better make it Duracell. Get $5 when you purchase the Batman and Robin video and Duracell battery packs. I believe in miracles. Where you from? You sex a thing, sex a thing, you. presentation of college football is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Microsoft, where do you want to go today? State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Miller Lite, now the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Bebo, saying it can't get much worse than this part is. Come on. Bebo smells something bad. Seven to go in the third, 34 17. And, uh, tough afternoon for him. Four INTs, resulting in 24 Colorado points. Turn it over in this business, gonna lose. That's just the way it is. 23 turnovers this year now for Texas. Better than three a game. Mitchell takes a knee. And here comes the backup quarterback, Richard Walton. Number 10, he's a junior, 6'5", 225, Bay City, Texas. The crowd will pick up on it here, and you'll hear a ripple of applause. They've seen number 10. And enough of number five for the day. Trailing, 34-17. Richard Walton steps in. Incomplete on his first.
first effort. Tried to throw that sideline pass. That was Robert Dulnick, the intended receiver. First time he's had a pass directed at him. to the 21 uh, yard line. Let's check in with John Saunders. Brent Northwestern and Ohio State. The Buckeyes starting to pull away. Stanley Jackson in 10 yards to D. Miller for his second touchdown catch of the game. And the Buckeyes now leading 28 6. The third almost done. Brent. All right, John. 28 6 blowout city there. And here this could become one. 34 17. Backup quarterback drops back into the shotgun for the Horns. Richard Walton. This time, across his body, picked off. There's interception number five, and Kelly with speed goes for the end zone, doesn't make it. Out of bounds at the two yard line, and that young man, Ben Kelly from Cleveland, is going to be some football player before it's finished at Colorado. Only a freshman. But did you see that dash, Dan, when he picked it off? And did you see he headed for the end zone? Last week against Kansas, he picked one off, and he ran about 70 yards back and forth. But again, it's a quarterback throwing late over the middle with not much on this pass. Throwing it on the run across his body. Easy pick for Kelly as he steps in front of White, and now he's going for that cone. It's going to come up just a bit short. Two interceptions in two weeks for Ben Kelly. Troutman is the running back. The call jammed up. Does it get there? Second and goal. And you know, Colorado came into this game with only seven interceptions in the previous six games. And today, the big DiMaggio. Second down and goal. That's not the high five you want if you're wearing burnt orange. Maybe we'll see Cicero before too long. Hessler flips it badly over his head. Troutman's got to go down on it, and he does. Now, the one who saved the day was Troutman. He didn't try to create anything and pick it up on the bounce. Kessler with a weird throw. If I was John, I'd go about 20 yards away from Neuheisel after I left the field following that pick. This is why Neuheisel got mad at Hessler in the Michigan game. You know, that's just trying to make something uh, too much out of nothing. That's a huge loss. 15 yards, you're all the way, you're knocking on the door of the goal line. So here's third and goal. Savoy's off to the right. Back to the middle, diving reception incomplete. And attempt at the four yard, flags fly all over. <laughs> like Roman candles there. Oh, isn't baby. We'll see what Rick is saying to Hessler about that pitch. Uh, I think Neuheisel knows that the cameras are going to be trained on him and Hessler. Now he's going to go after Cheverini for oh, yeah, slamming the ball. This is two 15-yard losses in a row. 30 yards for Colorado. Let's see if he has a legitimate beep here. Now the ball hit the ground. He got his hands down there, but they were a little bit late and this is what gets the uh, one two three flags coming down fourth and 31 Aldridge 48 yard There's his longest, 48 yards. 
So now, John, don't be pitching it away like that. Just go ahead and take the tackle. You hear me? 37 17. Come on, coach. He's up. Go ahead, big fella. We'll be right back. <laughs> At Ford Motor Company, we're experimenting with a backing up warning system, which sends a signal to help you avoid hitting what you can't even see. Sometimes, you just have to go backwards to go forward. Ford, quality is job one. Craig Lambert isn't too worried about how to invest for Zach's college education. That's because he works with a broker from Dean Witter. Together, they developed a long-term investment plan to help take Zach wherever he wants to go. Clients feel most comfortable with our ability to see things from their perspective. Now, when Craig looks into his son's eyes, he can see the future and smile. Dean Witter. We measure success one investor at a time. National Car Rental, we believe that when it comes to renting a car, there's really only one place to go. Because at most major airports in America, National gets you in your car and on the road fast. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. National Car Rental. Time now for the Burger King play of the day. Indiana against Iowa. You know Tavian Banks can run it, but he hands off to Tim White. He can run as well, and he can also throw. 64 yards on the reception. Damon Gibson with the touchdown as Iowa just rolled over Indiana. The Hoosiers did not score a touchdown in the month of October. Brent. Texas man, Aiden Frog, puts a big 6-2 up. Angry about losing both the Buckeyes and the Wolverines and some poor Hoosiers. Paid the price today. So Walton going to try it again. Five interceptions served up by Texas. There's what they have done this season, and then today, and the points off turnovers. First interception served up by Walton, and Kelly just took it away. And look who's looking on the sidelines. There's a brotherhood of quarterbacks, and uh, if somebody can relate to what Walton's feeling, it's that guy right there, James Brown. Three third quarter possessions for Texas, all have ended in interceptions during in the third quarter. Ricky Williams being strung out by Kelly and driven out of bounds. You know, you take a look at this Texas program and you think how times have changed in college football. Big programs in 97 that have been big disappointments. Look at the records of Notre Dame, Miami, USC, Alabama, and of course, even Colorado has struggled, but they're starting to play a little bit better. This would be a two-game winning streak for the uh, Buffaloes if they hang on here, but Texas, just more woe and and of course they'll jump all over McAvick. They were on him today virtually saying that he and his staff will be gone at the end of this season. Second down long pass incomplete. Walton was throwing one on one on that far side that time pretty good coverage by the the Buffaloes that defensive backfield featuring young Ben Kelly just seems to get better and better. And Brown puts the helmet back on. This is a young man with a heck of a future up there. Yeah, Ben Kelly, he, he combines the ability to uh, be strong enough at the line of scrimmage to play bump and run, but also we've seen an indication of his speed and quickness. The uh, Buffaloes feel very good about their corners. Wheeler's uh, a good bump and run man, as is Marcus Washington, who's six foot three and has uh, real long arms, as Texas calls their first time out here in the second half. Interesting that on that last play, Walton was trying to hit another true freshman, David Aaron, number 88, on that fade route. 
Well, here's your college football lineup, regional coverage, so check your local listings. Certainly in this area, most of you will watch Oklahoma and Nebraska. And I'll be happy to head for Lincoln. Take a look at the uh, number one ranked Cornhuskers next week. Ohio State, Michigan State will be a big one to the Big Ten. North Carolina State, Florida State, USC, Washington. That's your ACC and your Pac-10 games. And, uh, that's it. I mean, when Bebo takes a knee, you know you're in trouble in Texas. Or when Bebo takes four knees. <laughs> hey, said, so why don't you just clear these fellas off and let me graze a little bit, okay? I mean, enough of this craziness. <laughs> Get me a pasture. Oh, yeah. Well, I'd rather watch a field of heifers any old time than this. <laughs> 37 to 17 and 418. <laughs> Here's Walton. Blitz. Incomplete. Walton goes down at the 10 yard line. We got to start giving some credit to the job the Buffalo defense has done here in the second half. They have uh, only been on the field for about 13 plays because they keep picking off Texas passes. Damon Wheeler back deep. Schultz to punt it for the Horns. Well, he doesn't like the signal for the fair catch when he comes up on a punt, does he? And down he goes in a hurry at the 47-yard line. Colorado football. Maybe we'll see somebody besides John Hessler, too, for the uh, for the Buffaloes before this is over. I'd like to see Jeremy Weisinger. He's a Texan who's supposed to have all that speed. Or Drew Bledsoe's brother, Adam Bledsoe, before this is over. This is an excellent opportunity, uh, leading by 20. But uh, this man has got to learn when to try the fair catch as uh, you see Lewis just lay into Wheeler there. John Hessler probably going to work on his pitch on that option. <laughs> Coach might want to see him try that play again. <laughs> Running play straight ahead, Herschel Trotman out of Naples, Florida. The ball carrier for the Buffs. And again, Marlon Barnes injured. And there is young Adam Bledsoe out of Yakima, Washington. Freshman 6'4", 220, throws in on a rope. Let me correct that. You know, they have these these uh, double numbers here yeah. in Colorado, and I believe that was their kicker, Jason Leslie, instead of Bledsoe. They both wear number 12, which I don't understand at all. If I have a number, I don't want anybody else on the team to have my number. Check it down at 6. And Trotman to the 45-yard uh, line, so it'll be third down and three. And they got a bunch of guys over there, too. Uh, we've seen Stiggers, the wide receiver, wears number two. And they got the defensive back, Wheeler, wears number two. Doesn't make any sense to me at all. There's, There's the Blitz, so yeah, big guy. Ready to go, huh? Got the eye shadow. He's all set. Come on, coach, give me a chance. He apparently throws a rope. Isn't that what you told me you watched him in practice? Yeah, and in football, we call that eye black, Brent, not shadow. This <laughs> 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 the running back. Catches bait at the 40-yard uh, line. I think in soccer, they refer to that as eye shadow. I got it. Yeah. Toller, Toller is the, uh, the receiver for the first down. Jack Aroot. Brent, all this talk about quarterbacks, you know, Rick Neuheisel, as we know, is a former quarterback. He has a five-step quarterback checklist. Now, under protection, he wants his quarterback to check out of the huddle who's blocked, who's not. Gimmies, is there something there for the taking? Reads, he wants to identify the receiver, footwork, what is the play call for? And, oh, yeah, the snap count. <laughs> Hessler hands it off. Dwayne Charrington. Pounds inside for 11 Yards, Dusty Renfro makes the stop for Texas, and this uh, Longhorn team is reeling right now. And, you know, it's always important to remember what the snap count is, as Jack will uh, tell you, I'm sure. Here's, there's, look at these two big guys coming on the pull. 
Got Welsh and Wade coming there, and that just gives uh, Charrington the chance to pick up a nice big gain of 10 yards. Phil Savoy slotted to the left on first down. Charrington penalty flag to fly. The umpire throws it in the direction of holding. Anthony Hicks, the first to hit him that time. This is not what Longhorn fans had in mind this year coming into this season. Nor it's not what Coach McAdick had in mind either. This was a very efficient offense. You know, a year ago, the Texas offense was the only one in the country to rank in the top 25 in rushing, passing, total offense, and scoring offense. It's amazing how things have turned completely around. Of course, the defense has put an awful lot of pressure on, but there have been so many turnovers by the offense this year. Hessler fires Savoy out of bounds. 29-yard line. Well, Big 12, things are uh, shaking up a bit, especially here in the south. That first one on top, upper left, that's overtime. First loss of the year for Oklahoma State in the south, remember. Iowa State beats Baylor. And how about Texas Tech? Certainly very much alive in the south now by beating A&M by three. Kansas State over Oklahoma. We'll see Oklahoma next week against Nebraska. And, of course, the Cornhuskers play at Kansas. Tonight, there'll be heavy favorites going into that. Injured Colorado player Melvin Thomas, good right guard, 300 pound senior lineman, being helped up. I think the thing that hurt the Longhorn offense more than anything this year is when they lost their two wide receivers, Wade McGarity and Dustin Armstrong, uh, and then they were forced to play with guys who just didn't have a whole lot of experience at the wideout spot. Then when you combine that with the lack of mobility of James Brown because of his ankle, you're going to have problems. Failed to develop any consistency down here the last two years. Certainly they could be spectacular. And we were there. I was in uh, St. Louis now with uh, Dick Vermeil. And I was the, watching uh, that one on TV, right Brent, and I thought that was one of the most brilliant calls a coach has ever made. It's one that will stick in my mind for a long, long time when Makovic went with the play action pass. Yeah, it was fourth down and one. James Brown, Derek Lewis, 61 yards. They beat the Huskers, and here we are a year later, and uh, everything very much up in the air. And Austin, second down and uh, 10. Kessler sprints, fires high, incomplete. John Saunders, how about Ryan Leaf and uh, Washington State? Are they coming back yet? Ah, you read my mind. Washington State down by a touchdown. Ryan Leaf, though, catches the blitz and tosses it across the middle. Kevin McKenzie does the rest of the work. 48 yards on the touchdown, number 22 for Leaf this season, and it ties the game at 21 apiece. Brent, back to you. John, thank you very much. Dan, I hope you get a chance to see Ryan, young man out of Great Falls, Montana. He's he got a nice throwing on. He could look important. And he reads the blitz, and he's got some receivers that can take that short pass and go the distance. Sherrington's the running back here on third and ten for the Buffaloes. He's trying to set the screen. Incomplete, well defended. Penalty flag is thrown. <laughs> They're going to get the Buffaloes for having a lineman downfield on that screen pass. The referee that called it, the umpire right there, was standing right on the line of scrimmage and checking out where the Buffalo offensive line was. Yep, that's exactly what it is. And uh, there's your north. Now, San Antonio will be the site of the championship game for the Big 12 this year. Nebraska will have something to say in that one. You can bet on it. Another great year. For Kansas State. What a coaching job by Snyder at that program. And there is your South right now, so let's take a little look at that one now. Texas Tech has pulled into a tie with Oklahoma State. AM &M, you know, falls back by losing to Tech, but not completely out of it. Texas, Oklahoma, and Baylor. And Dave Roberts off the Notre Dame staff. New coach down there at Baylor. He needs a couple years to get things going, and uh, the Buffs are going to have to hurry and get the personnel on the field here for this 
long field goal. This would be 46 yarder, but he kicked a 48 yarder a short time ago. So Aldridge enjoying a big day. He just went to curl in beautifully. Oh, what a nice day for Aldridge. 40 to 17. And it uh, it just hooked inside that upright as you uh, baked it to Brent. Four field goals on the day for Aldridge. Only had four all year coming in. And one of the things I asked the uh, Colorado traveling party, Coach Kristoff, how was your trip last night? A little bumpy, he said. They just got out ahead of a fierce storm, which would have kept them up there. But he said all the way down, they were fighting turbulence. And of course, those of you folks up in the Colorado area got pounded by that, uh, I guess, first severe snowstorm of the winter. And uh, I think I heard that uh, my friend Sonny Lubick up at uh, Fort Collins had to call off that game and going to get to play it tomorrow up in uh, Colorado State. This is this is Lubick's kind of weather. You know, he wants you to get get that team in here and play a football game. <laughs> there we go. Doing a little doing a little homework, huh? Well, you know, he's a quarterback coach. He's not only the head coach, he's a quarterback coach. And he has to be really careful that when he does go off and get upset and, and emotional of on his quarterback, that it, the team realizes that, hey, as a coach, a position coach, that's okay for me to do. But uh, I guarantee as the years go on and Rick uh, continues as a coach, uh, he will find a way to maybe wear two hats on the sidelines, and, and one when he's the head coach and the other one he's just the quarterback coach. I don't think I've ever seen a picture quite like that one. Yeah, I was sitting down there with a chalkboard yeah. right there on the sidelines. <laughs> the head coach, I mean, you know, he's not paying attention here. The kickoff, 121. We could do this. If he reads this, he comes here. You understand? Let me throw the ball there. We've got one-on-one -on -one over there on that side. Finally going to have a return, and it'll be Clayton who will bring it up. 20, 25. Good return for Clayton. Down at the 36-yard line. 34-yard return, and uh, coach and quarterback still working away over there. Now. Okay, now. <laughs> Who gets the last word in that conversation, Dan? The coach. <laughs> Head coach and quarterback coach. Gerard Coleman and Ricky Williams in the Texas backfield. So a new fullback here for Ricky. And of course, because the game got out of hand, we haven't seen much of number 11. And look at him come here in the second half. Down the 49-yard line. He was down. First down. There's a 14-yard run for Ricky Williams. Final minute of the third quarter. There's number 12, Adam Bledsoe. Starting to loosen up a little bit for Rick. Pounds with the fullback of the 45, Ricky Brown, who checked back in. The story of the game, the five interceptions by the Buffaloes. Four of them against James Brown. The deflection, the easy one. Another easy one against the backup. How the game has gone in the story. Five intercepted passes for Colorado today. And they have turned it into 27 points and they lead it 40 to 17. Walton sideline, complete whites beyond the defender down the sideline. And he's going to be out of bounds at the 37 yard line. coming. It is coming back to the 37-yard line where he stepped out of bounds on the pass from Walton to Brian White. That's good enough for the first down, but unfortunately it uh, didn't take him all the way down inside the 20 as when White turned up the field, he stepped on the uh, sideline and was out of bounds. So this figures to be the final snap of the third quarter. Richard Walton hoping to drive the horns into the end zone. And that'll end the third.
third quarter with Jeffrey Clayton carrying the play on a counter. Through three, Colorado 40, Texas 17. Hoping to play some. The picks. The frustrations, and on the other side, even Neuheisel not completely happy. The teaching, the instruction continues, and we'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Excuse me, is the seat taken? With the power of new Visa Platinum, you can rent a villa in St. Bart's, while away the long tropical days, sharing Coquille St. Junk with Nastasia Kinski. Of course, you're fired. You'd lose your job. You hate Coquille St. Jock, and Nastasia is actually dating a European kickboxer called Serge. But with the exceptional purchase power of the new Visa Platinum card, isn't it really nice to know you could? Visa Platinum, it's everywhere you want to be. To you, it looks like this. To a car thief, it looks like this. And to our Ford Motor Company engineers, it looks like one of the most powerful anti-theft devices ever. Only this key sends an electronic code to the engine before it will ever start. So it looks like your new Mercury Sable will be just where you parked it. Ford. Quality is job one. Defending champ DC United, the Colorado Rapids. It's down to one game. MLS Cup 97. Soccer American style, Sunday on ABC. Want to build or buy a new home? Come to First Bank for your mortgage loan. You can't beat First Bank's competitive rates, choice of terms, and personal service. First Bank has mortgage loans for most any type of home, and for refinancing, too. First Bank is locally owned with over 70 locations, and you can apply for your loan over the phone. You get an answer right away, and before you know it, it's moving day. First Bank, the Colorado Bank for you. Hi, I'm Shagman. And for years now, Rocky's Autos has maintained a high standard of excellence by offering Colorado's largest and cleanest selection of used cars and trucks. And to assure all vehicles on the Rockies lot receive our standard of high quality, we wash every car and truck in pure Rocky Mountain spring water. The water is fresh and sweet, making our vehicles Rocky Mountain clean. You don't become number one for nothing. <laughs> The end to all of this is in sight. Complete coverage today at 5. This is college football on ABC Sports. The final quarter unfolding here in Austin. 40-17. Colorado well on its way to a rather easy win because of five intercepted passes. And we will see a backup quarterback for Colorado. Jeremy Weisinger, number one, with his helmet on. Going to be playing here in the fourth quarter, it would appear, for Coach Neuheisel and the Buffaloes. Back up quarterback for the Horns, incomplete into the end zone, and that will bring up a third and six now. That was Jeremy Jones getting deep on the post that time, and Ben Kelly, number one, right there. Long afternoon for James Brown, the senior. Question is, who will be the quarterback next week when Texas plays Baylor? Well, Walton's not exactly uh, burning things up here. Well, One out of six. I, I would think they'd run James Brown back in there, wouldn't you, Dan? Being a senior and everything, third down and uh, and six. I think here's he Ricky Williams looking daylight. Slashes for the first. And at the end of the game, we'll have the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. You know, Chevrolet has awarded over six and a half million dollars to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Uh, getting back to answer your question, Brent, I think that Brown, James Brown, gives the Longhorns their best chance of being successful. Walton doesn't have the experience. He's getting valuable experience this afternoon. Richard Walton is playing against Greg Cicero right now. Cicero is the talented freshman who's going to come in and give him all he wants in the spring, I'm sure. This is Ricky Williams to the 21-yard line. You know, Williams, in the third quarter, 
rushed for only 20 yards, made one catch for six yards, had 111 yards back in the second quarter. So the scoreboard basically took him out of it. Colorado was so dominant in that third quarter. They never gave Texas a chance. Remember the Texas defense held for Bevo on that first series and then the turnover and it was lights out. Second down and five. And Walt puts it back and Ricky Williams steps over to the left. Inside the 15, another first down. I think he's got his head coaching hat on now, huh, Brett? Looks that way. Gonna get that defense to uh, fire it up a little bit here. But, you know, Ricky Williams, he's running for just more than yardage right now. He may be running for uh, a future in the NFL come next year. To the 13. Well, one of the things you had, you had an isolation early, but I'm sure the NFL folks are going to be interested in the way he blocked picked up a blitzer that's certainly one of the things if you try to take that next step I think he's a complete player yeah I do uh, too. He, he's got great hands he's got a baseball background and you know uh, that, that that has helped him develop his catching uh, skills he's coming out now to a big applause they take him out here with 1250 to go second down and eight and Hodges Mitchell number three splits over to the right side Split back situation. Walton has time. Fires diving reception at the seven yard line. So the catch is made by Derek Lewis. Is that Lewis's first reception? Yes, it is. And he's really their go to tight end. You saw the play that Hannibal Navy's made on him on that uh, great interception where Navy's and Sutter combined. But Lewis is, uh, he's got the ability to make some things happen from either the H-back position or the normal tight end position. Third down and two. Here's the pitch now, Brown. Whacked out of bounds on that far side. Ricky Brown from Arlington. That gives you a pretty good indication of the type of defense that the, the Buffaloes have. They want to force teams wide, and then when they try to cut up the field, linebackers and safeties close and put the big hit on the ball carrier. And this is the ball carrier that should be in the game all the time, I think. Ziegler makes the hit for Coach Kristoff. And the buffs, and here's your fourth down of one. Ricky's back. Got it. Cuts, dives, and they take it away. The ball from Ricky Williams that time, and uh, now some pushing and shoving is going to break out here, and the officials will have to sort everything out. I think they're going to give it back to Texas. As Phillips had it, actually recovered by Texas. First down. Yeah. Steve Bradley got on the end of that one. <laughs> Williams easily has the first down. But he was stretching and diving for the goal line. There goes the ball. Watch Phillips pick it up right there, number 91. But he's carrying it like a defensive lineman. And he's going to have it ripped loose right about here. And there goes the ball right to the tight end, Steve Bradley. So they've got a first down again. Now that's not a fourth down conversion there. That's another turnover for Texas. And one for Colorado. And the Buffalo. 16 yard line and they're gonna come right back with number 11 left side open this time he goes down at the seven yard line Barnes Sheedy Barnes the defender for Colorado now, a lot of times coaches don't like to see their running backs tiptoe but uh, when it's number 11 doing the the uh, tiptoeing and taking his time getting up the field Something special can happen. That was a nine yard gain on a draw play. It looked like uh, Williams wasn't going to get anything to begin with. It gives Ricky 189 yards for the day. Remember, he's had back to back 200 yard rushing games. Second down and one. Trying to get more. 
to the three yard line for Ricky. That's about four more yards. Puts him over 190. Seven yards short of another 200 yard day. Can't get it here, even if he busts into the end zone, unless there's a big loss prior to the carry. All right, you can always fumble again and have Colorado pick it up and make it fumble. And hey, even Bevo got up down there in that corner, wants to see if the Horns can put this one into the end zone. Ricky bangs to the end zone. Spotted down about the uh, half yard line. Well, it sure looked like he was all the way through. He, his knee must have touched before he stretched out over the end zone. Take a look at it. Behind his fullback, Ricky Brown. Well, I think that's a touchdown. Power high for the Horns again. And this time, Ricky takes it in easily. His third touchdown, and Bebo says, way to go, Ricky. touchdowns and closing in on another 200 yard rushing day. We'll be right back. There are two sides to every Monte Carlo. you show the world is up to you. In 1984, two computer scientists envisioned the impossible, a seamless network of computer networks. They invented the router, and Cisco Systems was born. Out of Cisco came internetworking, and now directing millions of messages a day. Their equipment makes the internet possible. Cisco will be there as web users soar to 200 million by the year 2000. Where do you learn about companies so integrated into the future? Exactly. Nasdaq.com. Hey, stranger. Where you been? I don't smoke anymore. Sorry. I mean, great. How'd you do it? Nicoderm CQ. CQ? Isn't that the patch with the, uh... Three steps? Mm -hmm. I'm doing the steps. While Nicotrol has only one step, CQ has three. So you gradually step down your dose the way doctors and pharmacists prefer. Steps, Dad. It's the way to go. Nicoderm CQ. The power to calm, the power to comfort, the power to quit successfully. Little Earl. And he's already accomplished something the great Earl Campbell never did. Back-to-back 200-yard -back rushing days. And closing in on a third. Four yards shy of that number. I always liked the way that Earl Campbell ran. Why not? Number one. Ben Kelly. Back deep along with Damon Wheeler. The Buffaloes. There's number one. Number four. Another one of those dual numbers we saw Jeremy Weisinger, also number one. These are. They split them up offense and defense for us, huh? A while ago, Jeremy was over there with his helmet on. I see that he has it off on that court side right now, so we'll have to see who comes on and plays quarterback. Oh, here's Kelly. Nation's leading kickoff return man weaves his way. There is a penalty, breaks free, and out of bounds. But there is a penalty flag thrown. Kelly out of bounds at the 38-yard line, so he improves on his average. Waiting the outcome of the penalty. And 
That'll cost him. And John Hessler brings the offense back out. So Weisinger was all set. Adam Bledsoe, too, had warmed up. But 40 24 and 9 51. And New Heisel sends his favorite pupil back onto the field here at the 20 yard line. Stood up in the hole that time. Great defensive play there in the middle. Sproul. An active coach. Trying to uh, get his point across in any manner that he can. And of course, at the end, it, uh, it all looks good when you got 40 points on the board. But uh, New Heisel has to be a little bit concerned if uh, Marlon Barnes was hurt. And how will he come back and will he come back from his knee injury? Now it's Charrington, second and ten. Thirty-yard line, and Hefner couldn't hold on. Jackaroo. Brent, you know Rick Neuheisel does all kinds of different things. Well, he also comes up with themes for every season. He went and saw the movie *The Ghost in the Darkness* with Kilmer and Michael Douglas about two lions hunting together this summer, and he said, "Hey, *The Ghost in the Darkness*. What a great theme for my football team because." Two Lions normally don't hunt together, and the offense and the defense ought to play together. I think right now, after the day that Heisler's had, he kind of hoped that maybe instead of a lion, maybe he could be a tiger, a roadhog, anything but a lion hunting. Makes sense to me. Third and ten. Thank you, Simba. Belly flag thrown by the linesman. A lot of folks filing out. Prior to the snap, ball start. Offense, five yard penalty. You want to get an early start on the prime time lineup. This is what they can see tomorrow. The wonderful world of Disney, the Tower of Terror, and then the film The Devil's Child. Tomorrow at uh, 7 Eastern, 6 Central on ABC. Must be uh, Halloween time coming around, huh? Don't be long. I just got a kick out of big, big old offensive lineman holding hands in the huddle. Not sure what that accomplishes, except on cold days. Third and 15. Charrington down beautifully by Josh Sporrell, the freshman middle linebacker. That's two good plays for Sporrell on this drive alone. And uh, again, it's a true freshman playing for John Makovic, number 40. Shows good instincts and then gets drilled in the back by uh, Chris Morgan of the Buffaloes. Peach the punt. Standing inside the Colorado Five. And penalty flags. That's that old two yard rule, Brent. We're going to have good field position. Kick, catch, interference on the kicking team. No contact. Five yard penalty. First down. 8.15 to go, and New Heisel not happy with how the fourth quarter is unfolding.
at Chevy, we test our cars in a controlled environment. If you call trading pain at 200 miles per hour controlled, Chevrolet, the cars more champions trust. My name is Anda Andre, Director of Design for Ian Schroeger Hotels. I direct the creative effort of building all the hotels. We are our worst competition, so we just have to keep up with ourselves. The thing as long as you have to be competitive in the world you are living in, anything that helps, you should get. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by BASF. We don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. Marriott Hotels, Resorts and Suites. We believe when you're comfortable, you can do anything. Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. And the NASDAQ stock market. 8.15 to go, 40-24. Richard Walton trying to drive the horns again. Clayton, the lone running back. Walton looks left, fires underneath to his tight end at the 40-yard line, Steve Bradley. Making the reception that time, ball is, he is down. And you know, a lot of people have hung around here, Brent. I think that they uh, realize that Texas, with its good field position, is just two touchdowns and two two point conversions from tying this game up. And Colorado shown no indication that they're, they have any killer instinct at all. Not leaving. Dang it in. Second down and five. to the 31. There's a horn first down. Clock stops 730. And there's an injured Colorado player at the 41 yard line. It could be Sutter. He's intercepted two passes today. Five total interceptions and a reminder next week. Call your cable operator and ask for a second game. There's the Big Ten game on top. Big 12, we will be in Lincoln. North Carolina State, Florida State in the ACC. And of course, the Pac-10 game is up in Seattle. USC against Washington. James Brown through four of the INTs and taking a seat on the bench with Richard Walton playing and uh, Coach Neuheisel very unhappy. This is kind of a freak injury that Sutter suffers watch his left leg and will freeze it right there as he hits the back of David Aaron number 88 and his left knee just seems to go out that's a good sight the Buffaloes are loaded in their secondary they can move Marcus Washington off the corner back to uh, Sutter's position and bring Ben Kelly in to play the corner wondering why number 11 isn't in the backfield for Texas right now. There's a lot of time left. They got great field position. They're only one play away with Williams in the game. Slot out to the left. Walton, quick slant, being juggled at the 25 and incomplete. Thompson. Jamel Thompson, the freshman wide out. A lot of freshmen seen some playing time here in Austin. Yeah, you got to get this guy in the game, though. If I'm Richard Walton, I, I, I would go over to the sidelines, grab him by the shoulders, and drag him out to the huddle. I hope he's not hurt. It's the only thing I can figure out why he's not in the game. And, uh, for Colorado fans, that's not a good sight. Second and ten. And it's third and ten. Hey. 
Now here, Ricky Williams returns and uh, derisive cheer goes up. Well, I mean, this is the best player on the team. We've seen what he can do. And, and seven minutes to go in the ball game. Down by two scores and two two-point conversions. Shotgun for Walton. That inside handoff. Brown battles to the 24. Appears to be short of the first down. Ryan Black making the hit. So here comes the fourth down. And the other safety is down. This is Ryan Black. The Buffaloes lose Sutter. And now Black is shaken up. This big hit. As Brown bounces off of one. Here comes Black. They just hit helmets there. That uh, stunned Brian Black, I'm sure. Yeah. Ooh. Sutter being tended to on the far side. Fourth and two for McAvick and the Horns. Backup quarterback Richard Walton having replaced James Brown. John Sanders checks in at safety with Brown watching from the sideline. Split backs, Williams on the field. And a penalty flag. Didn't get the snap. Right to snap. Ball start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Make it a lot tougher. Uh, what a killer penalty. Looks like it's Jay Humphrey, number 67, right here. Yeah, he's moving before the snap. He was going to try and get a good down block, and they were going to run that power play that Williams scored on in the second quarter. So it is fourth and seven. Walton from the shotgun. Left side. Got the first down. Jamel Thompson steps out of bounds. The freshman picks it up. Clock stops 6-10. Ball at the Colorado 21-yard line. Well, that's a tough throw, too. That was a, the width of the field. A great throw by Walton. And a good job by Thompson after he makes the catch. He's just about a yard or two short of the first down. Strong arm by Walton. And now watch Thompson get that first down. Cavill off to the left. Walton stays back in the shotgun on first down. Fires back, and there's Ricky Williams stepping out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Well, we've seen him uh, pass block. This is Williams in a pass route here. Does a good job of, of letting... The quarterback have a good angle to throw. Hannibal Navy's number eight that time did a poor job of staying with Williams coming out of the backfield. Junior quarterback Richard Walton. Trying to keep the Texas hopes alive, and it is Brown on a draw to the six-yard line. First and goal for the Horns. Six minutes to go. And the medical staff has told Neuheisel that Sutter is not returning defensively. Watch the block this time by Ricky Williams as he helps out his fullback, clears the way right there, and Brown picks up a first down, down to about the five-yard line. Needing a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Walton, right side, incomplete. Had a man open. There's Dulling, number 28. He was open in the end zone briefly. 
Yeah, I wonder if Mike Phillips, the middle linebacker, number 91, got a hand on this one. There's Phillips right there. And yeah, I think he got his left hand on the ball, just knocked yeah. it away at the last instant. Yeah, I think you're right. Because there was an odd reaction by the receiver. And this is Ricky Williams banging to the one. So it'll be third and goal, five and a half minutes. How about that, Brent? 200 yards, three straight games for Ricky. He came in as the uh, second leading receiver in the country to Tavian Banks. This might push him all the way to the top. Chance for his fourth touchdown out of the power eye. He'll get the call. Williams dives for it and got it. Four touchdowns on the day for Williams. And now would you put it right back in his hands for the deuce? They go over to the left side behind Octavius Bishop and Roger Raisler. Jamel Thompson in for Makovic's sideline brings the play into the huddle. This year, Texas three of three in the two point conversion statistic. They show a slot to the right. Teams love a pick play in this situation. Ricky Williams over to the right. Derek Lewis steps in motion to the short side. Walton needs this one. Got it underneath. Incomplete. 40-30. It's a 10-point game. Marcus Washington, the defender. Breathing a little easier on the Colorado sideline. We'll be right back. Why is America on America Online? It puts the whole internet right at my fingertips. You can send instant messages just like that. The news is breaking. I've got it now. I can stay a little closer to my family. You've got mail. America Online. Easy to use. Friendly menus. Put in the disc, click, you're online. And we've been working night and day to more than double capacity and make it even easier. I got homework help, and my dad thinks I'm a genius. America Online. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. You worry, you're overprotective, you're a parent. Isn't it nice to know that there's something almost effortless you can do to protect your family even more? Just ask your State Farm agent for a free family insurance checkup. It's a smart way for you to decide if your family's insurance coverage is up to date. So they'll be better protected. And maybe you'll worry a little less. State Farm. People frown about all sorts of things. Sometimes it's about money. The one thing that won't cost you a lot is the Lumina from Chevrolet. Because Lumina offers you more standard safety features for the money than any other six-passenger car in its class. In fact, at under 17.8, the Chevy Lumina is $1,000 less than a Taurus LX. For you, that's one less thing to worry about. So see your Chevy dealer for a Lumina today and give your face a rest. The cars more Americans trust. season for the uh, Texas defense giving up 40 points here today against Colorado find themselves trailing by 10 with Kristoff over there Trying to bring it together for his defense I guess what we expect an onside kick here Dan I think the Buffaloes are expecting it and I think that uh, it would be a good move by the guys with the burnt orange jerseys to try that I know that Dawson is probably pretty good at it the experience that he does as a uh, senior. In this field, we've seen how the balls will bounce. This is an excellent grass field for an onside kick. The ball will bounce almost like a, an artificial surface. 508 remaining. Colorado leads Texas by 10. High scoring affair here in Austin. 40 30. Austin's got the four men on his right. Take it deep. They're going to bring it out and play defense from the 20. Well, perhaps Makovic sees that there's five minutes to go. And he likes the way his defense has been playing. 
And it looks like Jeremy Weisinger and Adam Bledsoe will just have to watch. That's too bad for Weisinger being a, from Texas. A lot of family in the stands today. But uh, this game turned out to be a lot closer than a lot of people thought. John Hessler, fifth year senior. to Charrington, who goes nowhere against the Burn Orange defense that time. And Aaron Humphrey is hurt. Came into the game with a bad ankle, and he's going to have to come out now. But again, it was the true freshman, Josh Burrell, that made the tackle as Humphrey turned him to the inside. And another injury to the defense of Texas. Here he is, number 49 right here. Played a heck of a game. You can see that he just gets overpowered that time because of that sore ankle by Tennyson McCarty. A bad day for injuries on both sides. Barnes is gone for Colorado. Sutter's gone for New Heisel. Now Humphrey limps off. Texas has two timeouts remaining. It'll be interesting to see where Makovic decides to use those two. Second clock is running. They come up to the line. Game clock has been started. And they bring down the 25 second clock almost to one. And then Hessler on a bootleg runs it, stays inbounds. Now he slides down at the 37 yard line. Really a heads up play by Hessler. Did not go out of bounds, did not stop the clock, and picked up 16 big ones. So it is stopped just briefly as they move the chains after the first down. And then it will be restarted. There it is, the referee begins it again. That's just a killer play by Hessler. The long arms have been pretty good at stopping the one back offense. But on the bootleg, there was just nobody there. Check back in, spins to the 43 yard line on first down, and that clock continues to tick away on Texas. Troutman covering up, running with uh, the ball in both hands, even as he was spinning. Picked up a nice gain. This is where that big offensive line of Colorado can really take control, especially when the, uh, you have the injuries to the uh, Texas D line. Three twenty, taking away. Here's the second and four. And Troutman stopped right about the first down marker. Lead for the Buffaloes. I think they got the first down. Humphrey. And that is so symbolic of the Texas season. 
You wonder if all the links are back in the chain. Sure. And you also have Why to wonder. Measure? Yeah, you have to wonder about the eyes of the <laughs> officials. Oh, man, here you go. Watch this one. <laughs> well, I've seen it all. I've seen Bevo laying down during a ball game, and I've seen a broken chain. Well, here's our Chevrolet <laughs> MVPs. Ryan Sutter from Colorado. Sorry that he went out with an injury. And the great Ricky Williams from Texas. Chevrolet donates $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements. It's been a Chevrolet tradition for more than a quarter of a century. Inside of three. A first down at the 48-yard line for the Buffaloes. Troutman, Allen, cut back. Crashes to the 40. First It'll first stop first again. Will well, they reset the chains on another first down? For the Buffaloes. He's a great one, but it's a long, long day and a longer season for the Longhorns. Just a disastrous start to the second half for the Longhorns. Three interceptions on three consecutive possessions. Two by James Brown and one by Richard Walton. One run in for a touchdown. It's too much for Texas to overcome. Five INTs overall. Number five. Troutman again. So we'll wrap up the last couple of minutes here. Three consecutive. 200 yard rushing games for Ricky. Second up. Second down and eight. That's on that bootleg roll back. Fires to the tight end. And he's out of bounds inside the 10 yard line. Brody Hefner. So Brody gives the Buffs a first and goal against Makovic and the Longhorns. It'll be interesting to see now with the, the game in no longer in doubt. Will Neuheisel have his quarterback take a knee a la Joe Paterno in the Penn State Nittany Lions? He wants that to make absolutely sure. I think he's probably checking on the time management here to see that they can make it in and get it over with. Lead it by 10. First and goal. From the seven. We'll bring the 25 second clock down. It off to Troutman, who is going to bank toward that end zone, and he stopped short of it. Babineau making the stop. Final minute. Show no mercy. Rick yeah. Neuheisel. Yeah, that uh, really kind of surprises me. What do you get uh, for running up the score on Texas? I'm not sure. Number seven. I'm sure he had his reason. And now I'm sure the media will ask him about it afterwards, huh? Aldridge. The extra point is good. Coach and student leading it 47 30. Timeout. 
I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. I want my baby back